Well, hello and welcome, YouTube. Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video, all math based, of course. And as always, it is an honor and a privilege to be serving you here today as it is every day here in my virtual classroom. Okay, step on inside. And uh, if you're watching this as it just uploaded, it probably falls out of sequence with anything else that you've learned or seen. Because I haven't uploaded a video, at least not publicly, uh, on my channel in probably a few months, not since my final review videos of your. But uh, this would fall into sequence with something you would do with multiplying polynomials um, if you were doing some foiling or other bigger expansion and that's what we're going to do here we're going to take a binomial two terms and expand it to any power any imaginable probably not to the 12th power that's going to take way too long for me and the numbers would get too big but we could and that's the point this is called the binomial theorem or binomial theorem however you want to kind of say that binomial expansion take a binomial and raise it to some bigger power. So I have a problem set. I believe it's numbers three through 20 on my own thing. So I think it's 18 problems there. And some of them fall into some statistics things. And that's really one of the good uses for it. Besides just here's the algebra, here's how it works. There's some statistics that we can take in this. And I will show you kind of how that works. And I might need a calculator for it as well. You might as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing. I'm going to skip. I blanked out numbers one and two. I'm actually going to write some things up here. They do some exploration. I want to do some different exploration with you. But here are the kind of problems we are going to really take care of and start with before the stats. Use the binomial theorem to expand each power of the binomial. So x plus 6 quantity cubed. Now before I actually do all these problems, let me first say what you don't do. This is not, this is not just x cubed plus 6 cubed. Now I say it's not just that because these two terms are actually involved, but you don't just take the 3 and distribute it among the x and 6. You're missing some terms here. If you think about it, x plus 6 cubed is x plus 6 times x plus 6 times x plus 6. You have to take this and maybe two at a time and foil that out, right? This, 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 this. And then you take whatever that result is and multiply it in the x plus 6. It takes some time to do that if you're just doing it one bit at a time and it's not as short as this. There is an in-between though, and I want to help you with it. <clears throat> now that in-between requires a little bit of explore, uh, exploration explanation that I'll try and be kind of quick on, but if this is your first time seeing these things here, I got to give you a little bit of explanation as to what it is. And maybe I can link you to an older video that talks about the stat stuff, or maybe we have enough in the stat stuff that I can really explain what it is when we hit it. What I'm going to first introduce to you, actually, let's see which way I want to go about this. Um, let me first, before I do this, you know, you might've come off of special cases such as a perfect square trinomial such as if you just do a plus b quantity squared. Now this is a squared, not plus b squared, but plus 2ab plus b squared. And remember, a plus b quantity cubed would be taking a plus b, a plus b, and multiplying by that, distributing it, right? But there's a faster way to kind of get to that. What is a plus b quantity cubed? What is a plus b to the fourth power. Let's explore some of those by looking at something else leading into it. And it's something called Pascal's triangle. Pascal, P-A-S-C-A-L. Think of the, uh, what was the the chameleon in, Rapun not Rapunzel, what's it called? Tangled, in the movie Tangled, the chameleon, his name's Pascal. She's She becomes a bit of a math whiz. Pascal's triangle. It is a triangle of values that have I don't know if some are just, it's, it's just the greatness of numbers that there are some coincidences involved in why he really built it. It's not just, hey guys, I met a triangle of numbers and like, oh great. There are really cool either coincidence or patterns and stuff just because of how magic numbers are that uh, some things occur. So I don't know what the origins of Pascal's triangle is, but I'll show you how to build it and how we're going to use it. If you want to try and find some more things, I'm sure you could Google them online. But Pascal's triangle is going to do this. At the top of the triangle is the number one. Going down the sides of the triangle is, is going to be ones the rest of the way. This one stems off into a one on the left and a one on the right in this next row. In the row after that, what you want to just kind of start doing is remember, ones will keep pouring down the sides. But in between any two numbers, I want you to take the sum of those two numbers. This is a one and this is a one. And in between, we're going to have a third number here that is the sum of one and one. One plus one is two, and there's that row. And by the way, I think I call this the second row and third row. This is actually gonna be called row zero, and row one, and row two, okay? The next row, row three, will actually have four values, a one on the sides, and in between these two numbers, we'll take the sum of these two, one and two, and we'll get three, and this two and one, and we'll get three. Spoiler alert, 
this will be symmetrical the entire way. If you divide this down the middle, you're going to see the same thing on the left side as you do on the right side. That's not going to change. That's row one, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Row 4, here's a 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. And of course, 4 and 1 as we do that. I'm going to do, um, how, let's see what my numbers look like here. To the seven, Okay, 7th power. I'm going to do at least 7 rows total, which is technically 8 rows. Yeah, I'm going to do 7 rows, so I might need a little more room. Evaluate. Eh, I can clean that up. All right, 3 more rows to, whoop. That's the stuff I wanted to hide before. Three more rows to go here. Give me one sec. Let me lock that in. All right. Three more rows. Row. Give me a moment. I'm sorry, guys. There we go. Row five. So here we go. One on the side. One plus four is five. And then 10, 10, five, one. Row six. One, six, 15, 20. 15, 6, 1, and then row 7, 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. Okay, 7 rows. And I'm going to refer to this when I need to, right? I need to actually refer to this here and there. So as I mentioned, the, the rows themselves, this is going to be considered row 0 and row 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7. And we need that information for some other things here. Okay, here's the build of Pascal's triangle. Now it can be infinite. You can go 100 rows, you can go 1,000. As long as you can keep adding and you can fit the space and you want to do that, um, you can do that. So anyway, that's how I generated these values here. Now there are other ways to generate the values and there are other meanings behind these values that you can find. You can find some, look, look, these count up through seven, stuff like that. There are a lot of things we can do there. But here's what we're going to do. We are going to use these in a very specific way that have to do with, you know how we raise this to the second power here and to the third power and fourth power? This is going to be identified with the row that we were referring to before. Notice how I said row zero, one, and two and such. I don't know if you notice really, really quickly here, but row two, row two has the numbers one, two, and one. Notice that, one, two, and one, three different values. If you notice to the second power here, this expands to three different values. Do you notice the coefficients of all three terms? This is a one, that's a two, and this is a one right here. And there's something to that. And I'm just going to save you, you know, the energy right now. These coefficients have everything to do with your binomial expansion. If you do it to the first power, let's forget the third power for a second. If we did a plus b to the first power, what is that? Well, it's a plus b, or specifically, it is 1a plus 1b. Where do you think that comes from? Row 1 right there is 1 and 1. What's a plus b to the 0 power? Let's just write in this color. a plus b to the 0 power, that's literally just 1. Where does that come from? It's right there. So you can kind of see a pattern already with this. And I think kind of that's the extent that I'm going to go with talking about it right now. I can't get much deeper into it. I, I can, but I'm going to try and avoid getting much deeper. There's a formula I can really write out. and I. I will at some point, but it has to do with something called combinations. And I'll talk about combinations when we get to the stats. But what you notice here is kind of what's happening as you keep introducing this. Let's go to row three, one, three, three, one. These will be the coefficients to these terms as we expand this thing here. There will be a one, a three, a three, and a one involved. But can we notice what's going to happen here? Somewhere an A is going to be cubed. That's actually going to be the front guy. Somewhere a B is going to be cubed, that's going to be the back guy, right? Somewhere the A gets cubed, the B gets cubed. And that's just a single A that gets cubed, single B that gets cubed. What happens in between when you do your whole distribution, and listen, I haven't done any problems yet, but I have to show this, otherwise this won't work. I could do formula, but I really want to get to you in between. Somewhere when you do all the distribution stuff, you're going to get an A squared multiplying with B, uh, A multiplying with B squared, and multiple amounts of them that they can combine like terms and add together. And that's what comes in the middle. If you notice here, there's an a squared, and then there's that linear-esque a, there's a to the first power, and then there's no a here. There's no b here, there's a b to the first power, and there's a b squared. If you notice, the exponents of these individual variables either count down or count up based on which term you're going to. Here I have a cubed. Later here I'll have a squared. Later here I'll have a to the first power, and later here I won't have any a's whatsoever. And that's what's happening here. B. B, I don't have any B's right here. I'm going to have a single B to the first power here. I'm going to have a B squared right here. And here I'm going to have a B cubed. 
I feel like I do need to write some version of the formula at some point. But that's what's happening here. And I'm not going to write these ones anymore as coefficients. That's what you're getting. That is the expansion. I forget if I already wrote it, but that is the expansion of a plus b quantity cubed right there. It's not just a cubed plus b cubed. There are two terms in the middle. Let's try fourth power, and then let's actually try some of these with all these numbers and stuff. a plus b to the fourth power. We're going to use row 4, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. I actually use Pascal's triangle to do this. Now, the first one, a is going to be to the fourth power without any b's in it. 1's your coefficient. Now 4 is going to be your coefficient. Reduce a's power by 1. We'll get a cubed. Increase b's power right there by 1. Now we're going to go to 6. 6 is your coefficient. a will be squared. b will go up and be squared. I'm going to kind of run into the triangle. I hope that's okay. And then 4 again. A is now to the first power. B is now cubed. And then this one right here, uh, A, no more A, and B is to the fourth power. And there it is. That's the expansion. That's as quick as it goes, literally. Now, there are little flies in the ointment here that we have to consider. For one, we're not just going to be expanding variables. We're going to be expanding numbers. And I guess, uh, two, we're going to have negatives involved. I, I mean, there are going to be some other things, but that is... I didn't have to take a plus b to the fourth and actually do the foiling process. Here's I'm giving you kind of the shortcut aspect to it, and Pascal's triangle can help reveal these. Now, I mentioned these are the coefficients of these. You have to be careful when I say that because although those numbers exist, they will be multiplying by some other numbers that get thrown in the mix, such as this 6 that will get raised to the first power, the second power, and the third power. So you have to just be careful in what's happening. But let's go ahead and try some of the problems with this idea in mind. I'm going to point to Pascal's triangle when I need to, the row that we're going to be talking about. And let's see if, you know, let's see if we can get this in fruition without me throwing a massive formula involving combinations. I feel like if I say the combination thing, then I explain another formula within and you're going to be totally lost. I'll save that for the statistics bit. If you understand what's going on here, I think we'll get it. Okay, let's start with this number one, uh, number three right here, x plus six quantity cubed. I'll be referring to row three here, one, three, three, one, four terms, okay? So let me just write out the one, three, three, one so you have it again. I don't, I wouldn't do this each time. I'm just giving you the idea. So here's the thing. X is like your A, right? X is like your A and six is like your B. So right here, x is going to be cubed. 6 is not going to be raised to a power. Literally what's happening here is x is getting cubed and 6 is getting raised to the 0 power. 6 to the 0 power is 1. You can see where its non-existence comes into play there. So I'll write that for the first one. Maybe some other ones. It, it might be worth writing. But first and last term, you can see one of the terms, uh, one of the things goes away. Uh, right here, this is where... Uh, x will now get squared, and 6 will get raised to the first power, and they're being multiplied by 3. Here, x will be raised to the first power, and 6 will be squared, and here, x will be raised to the 0 power. You can see it go away, and 6 will be cubed, okay? So there's a start. There's that first step that I can use right there. Following along, this is it's still a 1. I mean, I'm going to kind of get rid of the 1 there. 1 is 1, 6 to the 0 is 1, you're left with just x cubed. That was kind of expected on that front, right? Just x cubed. This next one, what's going to happen? We, we're going to have 3x squared, and that will be multiplied by that 6. I mean, it, nothing really changed when I said all that, but I just want to make sure that you're seeing what's happening. 3x squared gets multiplied by 6. That means the 3 will be multiplied by 6. You could see what was a 3 before. Really no longer is a 3 on my problem uh, but it starts off you still that three is still used this three will be multiplied by an x and a 36 six squared and then lastly one times one right x to the zero is one and then six cubed is 216 it gets that large literally right there 216 so ultimately what we need is three times six which is 18 so we'll have x cubed plus 18 x squared plus 3 times 36 is 108, x plus 216. And that is the expansion of this thing right here. I don't know, maybe if you know your perfect square trinomial of x plus 6 squared and you foil it, you might be able to beat that. But I said that one really slowly, and of course you're going to want to, you're going to see me speed up as we do some of the other ones. But once we hit fourth power, I look, cubic, you might be able to beat it by doing the distribution. You hit fourth power, I... I don't think there's a chance you can try it, but there it is. 
Okay, the next one here, x minus 5 to the fourth power. Now, this one is a minus, so I think it'll be worth me writing this out one more time at least again and showing you these uh, coefficients. Just remember 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 or the uh, you know symmetry of that. Um, so here we go. I might need a little more room here. This one, we're going to start with uh, you know 1 times x to the fourth times. Now, check this out. This 5 is negative, and I'd, I'd prefer that you consider the 5 to be the negative as opposed to putting minuses here and there because you have to know when to alternate signs. But this negative 5 is being raised to the 0 power, okay? So 4, remember 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 4, now the x will be cubed, oops, and the negative 5 will be raised to the first power, all right? Go down on x, go up on negative 5. 6, the x gets squared and the negative 5 gets squared. By the way, even though parentheses seem a little weird for things like the x's, it'll be super important when we use it for a problem like this one, number 6, that you use those parentheses when you talk about it. And this isn't out of the realm of writing this down. This, this isn't a terrible step to do. It absolutely isn't, especially if you don't know what some of these to some powers are. And I'll tell you what, I don't think I know what some of them to some powers are either. I need to use a calculator later. I might as well probably whip it out pretty soon. Uh, 4 times x to the first power, negative 5 gets to the third power here, and then 1, x gets raised to the 0 power, negative 5 gets raised to the fourth power. Uh, I won't write the second in between step, I want to start cleaning it up right now, but I want to say some of these out loud so you understand. Listen, this once again just becomes x to the fourth power, negative 5 has no bearing on the very first term, negative 5 to the 0 is 1, positive 1 at that, and 1 times 1 is 1, you're left with x to the fourth. In this next one, I'd want to write a plus, but maybe not so fast. Negative 5 to the first power is a negative number. So this is negative 5 times 4. That's negative 20. We're actually going to have a minus here. Minus 20, and that's x cubed right there. So that's what that next one actually became. It became minus 20x cubed. It was actually a minus. This next one here, the negative 5 gets squared. Okay, it's squared, and that's 25, positive 25, times 6 is 150. So this is positive 150x squared. Kind of low on room. Let me drag this up just a tick. There we go. Um, negative 5 times 3 is negative 125. Yeah, you got to use the calculator here. Uh, I'm fine, I guess. Times 4 is negative 500, I think. So negative 500x. Did I say that right? Maybe we'll see. Yes. And then um, this, you know, this all becomes one. That's all gone. Negative five to the fourth is positive 625. So plus 625. And that's the result of that right there. So again, binomial expansion gets a little big. Look, so you have to work with some bigger numbers. So it doesn't hurt to write what I wrote right there. And I don't really hate what I put there. So if you notice one more time here with that fourth power, notice how the degrees of each term is a four. Uh, seemingly degree four. That's a that's a constant so but 4 plus 0 is 4 3 plus 1 is 4 2 plus 2 is 4 1 plus 3 is 4 0 plus 4 is 4 so those remain as 4 in row 4 and remember row 4 is technically the fifth row in here but row 0 is the first row that's where this thing will start okay and they <laughs> you we might not have the room but this this is uh, to the sixth power there are gonna be several terms here thankfully this 3 is a little bit smaller as we work this thing out so here we go I'm going to try and shrink what I talk about on this problem just a little bit. Actually, let's see if we can do this in one step. Hear me out loud when I do this, all right? The first term will be x to the sixth power. You take the first term raised to the sixth, the others to the zero, and it's times that one, right? In fact, I don't know the row six in full here. One, six, 15, 20, 15, six, and one. But the first coefficient was one. So I have x to the sixth, point blank, nothing, point blank, nothing else to say. Here's a plus. Right, uh, so so basically everything's gonna be positive. So I'm gonna put plus right there. What did I say? Six. Obviously, next one's six. So six, fifteen, twenty. I'm gonna remember that. So six. Um. Uh, I I might have to write some of these. Okay, six. Um, this will be x to the fifth here, and times. Listen, this is three to the first power. So times three. And then fifteen times x to the fourth times three squared. That's nine. And then 20 is the next coefficient, times x cubed, times 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27. Plus 15 again, right? It's symmetric. We go 15, 6, and 1. Uh, 15, this is x squared. 3 to the fourth power is 81. I've, uh, plus 
6 times x to the first power times um, 3 to the well, fifth power is 243 plus 1 times x to the zeroth times 3 to the sixth, 729. So that's the very end one, right? X to the sixth here, three to the sixth there, in between some stuff. We're almost done. We just got to do six times that, you know, we just got to multiply those. Everything else is kind of ready. We kind of have everything else prepped. So if you can do that, that fast, that works out, that's probably, I probably wouldn't walk more on the wild side and try and get all those in because these numbers kind of still have to be known too. You know what I mean? I mean, you could have Pascal's triangle in front of you, no problem. So this is X to the sixth plus 18X to the fifth plus um, 135, and I'm, I'm gonna try and impress and do a lot of these in my head, x to the fourth plus 540 x cubed plus 915, wait, no, I'm sorry, 1,215, I was thinking 15 times six, 1215, I think that's right, 1215 x squared, My calc I do have a calculator right here actually, I'm gonna probably use this eventually, 1215 x squared, let me confirm that, 15 times 81, yeah, 1215 x squared, six times 243, I'll use the calculator for that, I don't wanna mess up or take a long time, 1458 plus 1458 x plus 729, okay, hold on. Okay, so there's that final result right there. So, you know, a lot of work to be had for that expansion but not as much as if you did it in that manual way. Definitely saving time there. Okay, now we're gonna deal with ones that have a coefficient in front of your variable. So the, re the reason you have to be careful, the, re um, the reason I talked about the parentheses is because you also have to raise the two to the same powers that you're raising x to. Two is gonna be raised to the third power, second power, first power, and zero power, just like x. So I'll write this one as, as a larger thing, like I kinda of did the previous problems before in parentheses, all that. This is to the third power, so that's your one, three, three, one scenario. So uh, the first one, we'll have a, one is the coefficient, I'll leave that be. Um, so one times two x to the third power times negative one to the zero power, right? I'll put that up. I'll put that up this time. Uh, plus 3 times 2x squared and negative 1 to the first power. Plus 3 times 2x to the first power times negative 1 squared. Plus 1 times 2x to the 0 power times negative 1 to the third power. So notice the 2x's go down. 3, 2, 1, 0. The negative 1 goes up. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. So what does that equal here? Again, that negative one to the zero is just one, it goes away. What's two x cubed? It, two x quantity cubed is eight x cubed. The two gets cubed and so does the x, okay? Now, because of that minus, signs will alternate. Negative one to the first power is negative one. It alternates sign. I mean, listen, negative one to an even power is one, to an odd power is negative one, that's it. Um, two x squared, two x quantity squared is four x squared. We gotta do three times four x squared, that's 12x squared. Uh, negative one squared, it's positive now. So two x times three is six x right here. And then you're left with negative one cubed, which is minus one as two x to the zero is just one right there and goes away. And that's your binomial expansion of that one. Okay, these numbers will get kind of large here. I gotta get a calculator out for this probably. 3x plus 4 to the fifth. Let's see what I can shrink, what I need to write here. Of course, the 4 is uninvolved in the first term. Ooh, 5, let's see. Fifth row, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. That's simple enough, I got that one. All right, so the first one, the 1, right? 3x to the fifth, straight up. It's gonna happen there. And then 5's your coefficient here. As 3x gets the fourth power, 4 is to the first power. I'll just write 4. Hopefully you can understand that. 10, 3x is cubed and four is squared. Is it okay if I just write 16? I'm just gonna write 16. I wanna clean some of it up because otherwise I gotta do the steps multiple, multiple times. Um, maybe you can start to work, you know, maybe you can start to understand that. In fact, next time I'm going to, uh, you know what, I'll write this. I'll write four squared this time because the other one I'm doing three X with. Next time I'm gonna straight up do two X to those powers without writing the in between. That might be a problem because you gotta be counting down five, four, three, two, you know what I mean? Some things are better worth writing than not if it's worth it. Uh, 10 
and then 3x is squared here. Yeah, see, I did look to this to know that 3x was squared. And 4 is cubed. And then 5, 3x is to the first power. And 4 is to the fourth power. And then the 1 again, 3x is to the 0, 4 is to the fifth. Okay, let's see if I can do this all in one step-ish. 3 to the fifth is 243. So I get 243x to the fifth power. Now here we got to do 5 times 4, which is 20, times 3 to the fourth. 3 to the fourth is 81. 20 times 81 is, wow, 1620. 1620 x to the fourth. Okay, uh, 3 cubed, oh my goodness, here we go. Uh, I gotta, I'm gonna use the calculator, but 3 cubed is 27, 4 squared is 16. So I'll do 27 times 16, and then we gotta do that times 10. So 432 times 10 is 4320. That's x cubed. Uh, plus 3 squared is 9, 4 cubed is 64, and 9 times 60, I should be able to do that, but that's okay. 9 times 64 is 576, times 10 is 5760, 5760x squared, plus 4 to the 4th is 256, times 3, I don't know why I don't know that. 766? 256 times, oh, 768? 768 times 5. Whoops, I didn't do that. Uh, times 5 is 3,840, 3840. I might make a mistake here and there when I'm trying to show the mental math. I'm trying to show you the limitations of what you can do mentally and what you can't. And then 4 to the 5th, I guess, is 1,024. 4 to the 5th, 1,024. 1024. So there's your final results on that guy there in the binomial expansion. And uh, I don't want to say this next one's the last one. There are plenty of other problems beyond this one, but good thing I have the room. All right, to the seventh power. I don't use seventh power very often. 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, and 1. I'll see if I remember those ones, I, hopefully. Okay, so uh, first one, I, as advertised, I'm going to try and do as much as little as I need to with the fifth power, something like that. 2x to the seventh power, 2 to the seventh is 128. So this will be 128x to the seventh as the first term. The next term, you are going to have 7 times 2x to the sixth. So 64x to the sixth, 2x quantity to the sixth, times negative 3 to the first power. Okay? I think the next number I said was 21 here. So 21 times 2x to the fifth, so 32x to the fifth, times negative 3 squared, which is 9, plus 35. That's the coefficient for the next part. I'm going to need a lot of room for this. Um, multiple lines here. 2x to the fourth is 16x to the fourth times 3 cubed, negative 3 cubed, negative 27, plus another 35, I'm so glad I have a calculator, 2x cubed, uh, 2x quantity cubed is 8x cubed, and this one's to the fourth power, negative 3 to the fourth is 81, positive 81, plus 21 times 2x squared, so 4x squared times negative 3, da, 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 negative to the fifth is negative 243, plus 7, times 2x to the first, so 2x, and then negative 3 to the sixth is 729, positive 729, and then plus that 1, so the last one is negative 3 to the uh, seventh power, which is, I don't know the one, uh, negative 2187, so minus, minus 2187. Okay, calculator the rest of the way, let's see what this equals, 128x to the seventh, Okay, uh, negative 21 times 64 minus 1344 x to the sixth. 21 times 32 times nine, oopsie. 21 times 32 times nine. I was accidentally adding the previous result. Plus 6048 x to the fifth minus, of course it's gonna be minus 35 times 16 times 27. Wow, 15,000. 120 x to the fourth plus 35 times 8 times 81 22,680 
x cubed minus, this is a part of it, uh, 21, 80, so that should be 84 times 243, 20,412 x squared plus 14 times 729, thank goodness I didn't go without a calculator, 10,206 x minus 2187. All right, there's the final result expanding that. Say that five times fast, yuck, yuck. Yeah, a lot of terms, but listen, we, we saved time. That was the fastest we could do with the only calculator for number usage. That's the fastest we can go, right? But that's, uh, and there's there's use to it here. Now, listen, you're not always going to expand. If, if you're timid about this, what I'm showing you, I'm offering you a shortcut into what's achievable. But ultimately, you're probably not always going to have all of these be used. When we hit the statistics portion stuff, we're really actually just gonna look at maybe just one of them or just the tail end of them. Maybe just the first three among these or the last three. It depends on the kinds of questions that are asked. I honestly don't know. I just know that this is tailoring towards statistics. That's the point of the binomial theorem or it's among the points of it. So, um, <laughs> I am digging myself this hole by uh, having myself do all these problems, but Promise is a promise. All right, let's see. Now, the ones with these is they introduce other variables, which is just another re-reminder of, you know, just be careful of what you have there. If you notice, we kind of did this with the A and B things to start, right? As A's get cubed, the B's, or as uh, the A's go down, the B's go up. So you're just, you know, make sure you include them. So kind of work faster to start here with five. We got one, five, 10, 10, five, one. So let's see how much faster we can work now. One times X to the fifth power, obviously two Y's to the zero. Maybe I'll write that the first time. And then five times x to the fourth, but two y is to the first power, plus, it's 10, right? 10 times, oh, that four is to be on the outside. 10 times x cubed times two y gets squared, right? Plus 10 times x squared times two y cubed plus five times x to the first, oops, times two y to the fourth, plus, and then the two y gets to the fifth power. Like that, with the one. Okay, the first term is x to the fifth, of course. Now, five times two is 10, so this becomes 10 x to the fourth y, x to the fourth and y right there. And then the next one, it's 10 times four, two squared is four, so 40 x cubed y squared. Now 10 multiplies with eight, so 80 x squared y cubed. Then five gets multiplied with two to the fourth is 16, that's also 80, so 80 x y to the fourth, and then two y to the fifth, quantity to the fifth is 32 y to the fifth power like that. So there's the expansion, boom. I wonder how many of these I could do mentally. I, I don't think it's worth it. Um, okay, so let's let's try and take out some unnecessary bits here that I can. So I'll start with 3x to the fourth straight up, and then 3x cubed times negative y. Oh, I'm sorry, this is to the fourth power, right? So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. I totally missed that. A 4, boom. And then a 6 times 3x squared times negative y squared. I guess I'm not saving much time on this one. Um, four times three x times negative y cubed plus uh, negative y to the fourth. Okay, so that becomes three x to the fourth powers 81 x to the fourth like so. And then we have four times 27, which is 108. Oh, minus, minus 108 x cubed y, three squared is nine, so nine times, did I say nine? Nine times six is 54, so 54 x squared y squared. Remember that negative y to the second is a positive. This will be a minus, the signs alternate here, right? Four times three is 12, so 12 x y cubed, and then this is y to the fourth right there, okay? Hopefully this, I mean, I don't know if it's fun, but you know, hopefully you're getting the gist of it pattern-wise. And I'm really glad I didn't mention the combination thing yet, just because I, I think that's an extra thing that we're not really touching right now. Uh, it's another way 
Pascal's triangle operates. It has something to do with the probability, but the coefficients do as well. Okay, um, 5x plus y to the fourth. Okay, here we go. 5x to the fourth power. 5 to the fourth is 625. So we're going to start with 625x to the fourth. This is also to the fourth like the last one, so it's 14641. So plus 4 times 5x quantity cubed is 125x cubed times y plus 6 times 5x squared, quantity squared is 25x squared times y squared. Uh, plus 4 times 5x to the first, so 5x times y cubed plus uh, 1 uh, uh, plus y to the fourth. Okay, so that becomes 625x to the fourth plus 500x cubed y plus 150. Did we see these numbers? x squared y squared plus 20xy cubed plus y to the fourth. Did we have 5x plus 1 to the fourth power before? Was that a thing? Y to the fourth. I want to see. I'm going to say I'd save time and go to a previous problem that you remember. You idiot. Oh, no, we didn't. I, I don't know why those numbers looked familiar. Somewhere, where was the one? Oh, 115, 500. Okay, so they were different numbers. Oh, it was swapped. Okay. See the 625, 500, 150, 20, and 1? 625, 500, 150, 20, and 1. They, they did some different things. They threw in a Y. They swapped them and no negatives. Okay. I, but familiarity struck for me a little bit there. Okay, this is to the fifth power. Let's see if I remember. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. At some point, you just, you do it and you remember it. I don't know why I would otherwise, and that's why you build Pascal's triangle. I'm really going to regret number 14 pretty soon here um, without having done it yet. So x to the fifth is the first term, and then 5 times x to the fourth times negative 6y to the first plus 10 times x cubed times negative 6y squared. Um, Let's let let's speed up that process. Uh, Thirty six y squared. It's positive on that one. Plus uh, ten times x squared. Yeah, I don't need parentheses around this. X squared times six cubed. So two hundred sixteen negative two hundred sixteen y cubed. Plus five times x to the first times. Oh. 1296 1296 y to the fourth um, and then whatever six to the fifth is uh, six to the fifth minus seven thousand seven hundred seventy six y to the fifth remember we're doing that whole negative six y to the fifth power there so ultimately this becomes x to the fifth minus 30, that's 5 times negative 6, minus 30 times x to the fourth times y, plus, looks like 360, easy math for now, 360 x cubed y squared, minus 2160 x squared y cubed, all right, 5 times that, 5 times 12, 96, plus 6480 x y to the fourth, Minus 7,776 y to the fifth. Okay. Two more of these before we hit, I believe, the stats. I hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm checked out of these. All right. As a math teacher, I'm personally checked out of these. Hopefully, your teachers and task you all these. It's, it's quite a bit of work. But again, we saved time doing a lot of what we did. Okay. Uh, yeah, cubed. So at least it's less terms. 1, 3, 3, 1. Right? 1, 3, 3, 1. So we start with 5x cubed. That's 125. 5x quantity cubed is 125x cubed, 125x cubed, plus 3 times 5x quantity squared is 25x squared, negative 4y multiplies there, plus 3 times 25, uh, 5x, and then negative 4y gets squared, so positive 16y squared, yeah, okay, this one's a little shorter, and then minus 4y quantity cubed, which is 64y cubed, it's much shorter. I can probably even do this without a calculator. 125x cubed minus, minus there, right? So 12 times 25 is 300. 300 x squared y plus um, 15 times 16, 240. 
240xy squared minus 64y cubed. I hope that fits on the screen. Minus 64y cubed. All right, that's that final answer. That one actually was not very painful. This one will be. Um, and I, I, I'll I, fit the room that I can here. I, I'm not sure how this is going to go. I'm going to write it in green just to kind of make it stand out. And then we'll see what we can do. Oh, these aren't stats just yet. But these ones we can do in kind of an exact manner. And this is kind of the better use of it. This really actually leads into the stats a little bit more, which is good. But one more. All right, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much I can do. But listen, the more I can do mentally, the better. That helps me having to do one less step. Any one less step is better. Six, one, six, 15, 20, 15, six, one. You remember that? Remember, it's symmetrical. There are seven terms. One, six, 15, 20. Okay. I mean, I could write it again, but I'm trying to see if I can remember. So four X to the six, four to the six. I don't, I don't want to kind of remember that right now. 4,096. So 4,096 X to the sixth. Plus, at least it's not positive, negative, positive, negative. Six times 4x to the fifth, so 1,024x to the fifth times 3y. Plus, was it 15 and 20? 15 and 20. Plus 15 times, oh, somebody homered for the Diamondbacks. Uh, what are we talking about? 4x to the fourth, so um, uh, 256 x to the fourth, three y is squared, so nine y squared. Plus, I guess this isn't terrible. It's just it's just a lot. Um, Twenty. It's still I'm gonna have to write out a lot of numbers after this. I guess that's the one. That's the part that hits me the most. Uh, four cubed, so sixty four x cubed, and then three is cubed. Twenty seven y cubed. Plus. 15, I still have three more terms to go. So as far as fitting this, we'll see. 15 times, going down, 4x squared, 16x squared. And this is 81y to the fourth. That's 3 to the fourth. Plus, let me just fit it right here. 6 times 4x. And then 3 to the fifth is 243. 243y to the fifth. And then the last one is 3y to the 6th power straight up, which is 729y to the 6th. Okay, so the final answer there, let me do a darker green. We're getting darker, guys. 4,000, oh, let's try and do this in one line. We do a little smaller. 4,096x to the 6th plus, here we go. 6 times 1,024. I, I really should just pause and say, you know, save you the time. You can fast forward, of course. One eight four three two x to the fifth y. I thought I was going to do this without a calculator at one point. I forgot how large these numbers get. Three four five six l x to the fourth y squared. All right, twenty times sixty four times twenty seven. See, I I feel like I'm saving myself a little time by doing those powers the way that I did. Oh, hey, that's the same number. Uh, did I do something? No, I guess say number three, four, five, six, zero. Oh, now x cubed, y cubed. Interesting. I like it. Um, fifteen times sixteen times eighty-one. X squared, y to the fourth. Twenty-four times two forty-three. Where would we be without calculators, huh? 729 what is oh hey you know what that you know it wasn't that bad there actually might have been worse problems the seventh power was worse right okay i thought the numbers would just get bigger but because i know those to those powers enough that's good i right, use the binomial theorem to find the specified term of the given power of binomial so remember that r starts at zero they're saying at row zero you know that that first top one is zero so we can again we can use pascal's triangle here and find the fourth term in the expanded form here. So here's here's kind of how it works. And this, this will build a little bit to the combination thing. We're going to find the fourth term in the expanded form of this. So the fourth term in row six, I'm sorry, I keep going back and forth, to the sixth power. So row six, okay, so here's how this works. And I, I don't know if this is the part they're also mentioning right here. This is position zero 
and one, two, three, four, five, six. If you think about it, remember the degrees of the of the latter guy, it's to the zero power and then it ends to the six power, that's position zero. So when they said find the, well, I guess that doesn't matter. They say find the fourth term. They don't say fourth position. That'll matter later. They did say find the fourth term. So forget what I just said there. Fourth term is the one that involves the 20 right there. There are seven terms in it. That will be used for later. But one, two, three, four. Here's the fourth term with 20 as the coefficient. Okay. So how does that work there? With the six, we're going to have, you know what? Maybe it's worth me stating the formula at this point. So this is going to be 20 times. And then you have to think of how these things go down here. In the fourth term, we start with x to the sixth, then x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x cubed, x cubed. And then remember, these have to add to six. The negative one also gets cubed. It starts the zero power, and then the first power, and the second power, and the third power. That's where I'm saying the formula might kind of help out a little, you know, work itself out, because there's a part about how much you subtract and how much you apply there. But I think we can work it out by counting together here. And then I'll dig in that formula more deeply. Negative one cubed is negative one. So this becomes negative 20 x cubed. So we're not expanding. We're doing just the one. If you need to expand a little to get to it to make sense of it, I understand. Okay, the, to the fourth power, that's one, four, six, four, one. Okay, they want the second term. So in one, four, six, four, one, the second term uses the four as the coefficient. So we'll have four times the two x in the second term. Uh, in the first term, two x is raised to the fourth power. In the second term, it's raised to the third. And remember, this should offset it. The one should be raised to the first power. Three plus one should be four there. So four, uh, two cubed is eight. Let me write that. Two, uh, four times eight x cubed at times one. So that becomes 32 x cubed. Okay, find the third term in this one raised to the fifth power. If I recall, well, you can write it from here. One, five, 10, 10, five, one. That is what I do recall. The third term, first, second, third term, 10 is the coefficient. So we'll have 10 times 3x, 5, 4, 3, to the third power, negative 2y to the second power, right, 0, 1, 2, to the second power there. So this will be 10 times 27x cubed times 4y squared, as we cube and square those. And that'll be 27 times 4 is 108, so 1080, if I did that right, x cubed y squared. And lastly, here, find the fifth term in the expanded form of this guy. Oh, jeez. All right. What it was what? 1, 7, 21, 35, 35, 21, 7, 1, if that's right. So the fifth term, 1, 2, 3, 4, fifth term, 35 is your coefficient. So we have 35. Okay, the 6x gets raised to the... 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 to the third power. And then this one has to offset. That's going to be raised to the fourth power. 8y gets raised to the fourth power. The numbers are big, but it's just one term. So we'll deal with it. Um, let's let's kind of do this in the calculator in total. We got to do 35 times 6 cubed. That's 216 times 8 to the fourth, which I don't know what that is. And that's, oh my goodness. So this becomes, I don't even know what if this is millions, tens of millions. What is this? I have to write it out first. that number okay 30 million 30 million nine hundred sixty five thousand seven hundred sixty x cubed y to the fourth that is the fifth term and I, I had to be careful you know with fifth term and stuff like that I don't know if that's what they were warning of I think they're talking about the rows um, so yeah they were talking about the rows but the fifth term is literally that it's not the fifth position though this position zero one two three four five six seven it's just something to be careful with and i think it has a little more to do with when we talk about stats stuff okay so i'm gonna do uh i'm gonna do four more questions total i guess 20 questions total here okay so this is where i think i have to start talking about formula and this you know this this last bit doing these last four questions I have to reintroduce stuff again, like binomial expansion, and talk about where Pascal's triangle fits in this by talking about what are called combinations. Combinations <laughs> are the, the different number of ways that you can arrange something from a larger set of things, okay? Let's say there are five people, there are five people, and you wanna choose three of them. How many different ways can you choose three people 
among the five people that there are, right? Let me kind of show you an example of that. If there are five people, A, B, C, D, E, named Alan and Beth and Charlie and Daniel and Edward, whatever, and I have three spots to choose them from, what are the different ways I can choose them? You can choose A, B, C, you can choose A, B, D, A, B, E. Those are the different ways you can choose A with B there, right? You can choose A, C, D, A, C, E. You can choose ACE, that's a good choice. And you can choose A, D, E. Those are the different ways you can use A in that. Now let's kind of work with B. B, C, D, B, uh, C, E, B, D, E. Is that it? Um, uh, yeah, and then C and then C, D, E. I think I've done every choice there. Now, ABC and CBA are both the same thing when it comes to combination. There's something else called permutation, where if you change the order, it changes things up. But how many different ways was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, remember that number ten. Remember that number ten. Now, that ten was five people. You're going to see this notation later. Five people in a set. We chose three. There were three to choose from. There's five, choose three. If you go into Google, if you go to Google and you type out five, choose three, it'll spit out the number 10. If you know on a calculator how to work combinations, it's going to say that and it's going to give you the number 10. Here's, here's where you work this. If you have a set of N people and you choose R of them, they use different letters sometimes, sometimes they use K and things like that. You do it by doing what's called N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. If you don't know what factorials are, for example, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You multiply every integer down all the way to 1. Technically, times 1 doesn't change it. You multiply the integers all the way down to 1 there. So if I wanted to do 5 choose 3, and I'll tell you what this has to do with all this later. In fact, it might we can probably use these numbers later. If I do 5 choose 3, that would be 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 5 minus 3 factorial or 5 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial, or 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. Well, I have some 2 times 1s here that can cancel. That 3 can cancel there. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. So you get 10 left. So why am I talking about all of this right here? Why did I say all that stuff with combinations? Because combinations exist in Pascal's triangle. You remember Pascal's triangle? Remember that thing we're talking about, Pascal's triangle? Let me, uh, let me leave that up in case you want to reference that later. Remember Pascal's triangle? I'm not going to go far on it. I'm just going to write about four rows. There we go. Actually, we might need the next one. But I won't write all these out necessarily. Pascal's triangle Remember how these were rows here? This is row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These numbers are also combinations. These numbers are combinations for how many different ways you can arrange X number of people in, in uh, 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 out of Y people or N, uh, R number of people out of N people here. If you have zero people and you want to choose zero people out of it, there's only one way to do that. If you have one person and you want to choose zero people, this is where those numbers come from, you want to choose zero people out of that one person, there's only one way to choose zero people out of one people. If you have one person and you want to choose that one person out of that one person, there's only one way to do that. This sounds weird that I'm saying that, but that's exactly what this means. If you have two people and you want to choose zero people among them, there's only one way to do that. If you want to choose one person out of those two people, there are two ways to do it. You can either choose person A or person B. That's two different choices. If you want to choose two people out of those two people, there's only one way to do it, both person A and B. There's only one way to do it. You can't choose any other people out of the two. So that choice thing, and that's where those numbers come from that I mentioned before, zero, one, two, three. How many different ways, how many different ways can you choose this many number of people or things, items, out of the amount that there are? Three choose two means if I have three people and I want to choose two of the three people, how many different ways can I do it? One two, three. That's what this number is right here. And we go all the way down to row five. We go all the way down to row five. 
You have five people. How many different ways can you choose zero people among five? Just one. How many different ways can you choose one person among five people? Five. And choose two people? Apparently 10. And three, we established that was 10. Four people is also five. All five people, there's only one way to do that. Pascal's triangle, the first row, one is zero, choose zero. The second row is one, choose zero, and one, choose one. The third row is two, choose zero, two, choose one, and two, choose two. The third row is three, choose, etc. This keeps going. Three, choose zero, three, choose one, three, choose two, and three, choose three. It keeps going that same way. That is... I don't know if that's where Pascal said, hey guys, this is what I like about this triangle most. And of course, when we add the numbers up, that's how you generate it. But this is one of the biggest uses for in statistics. Now we can use these arrangements the way that we saw them, but we have to know how these combinations work. We have to know how these combinations work as far as doing it. What is position zero? What row is it? And the idea of how many different ways you can choose something is something we have to kind of talk about there. How many different ways can you choose something? Because probability is all about the number of ways you can choose something out of how many possibilities that there are. And that gets me into the entire formula of what I wanted to talk about before. You know how, oh, but let me keep the combination formula. You know how I was talking about there's a whole formula involved with binomial expansion that I didn't write before because it gets a little cluttered here. If you have some sort of a plus b to the n power, as you've noticed, what kind of happens here? The, in the first scenario, in the first scenario, we talked about how there's a coefficient of one to start. That's because you have n items here and we are going to choose zero of them. We have n items and we're going to choose zero of them. And then we are going to raise a, the value of a to the nth power, and we are going to re raise b to the zeroth power to start off with. Basically, n choose zero is one, and then all you're left with, and b to the zero power is one, and you're just left with a to the nth power there. The next thing, the next thing in Pascal's triangle, I don't know what row we're on. We're on row n, whatever it is. And then you go to the first position. If it was row five, it'd be five choose one or n choose one here. It's that number. The next one is n choose one times a to the, we go down one, n minus one power, and the b goes to the first power. This goes up one. It goes up one like that. And then we do n choose two times a to the n minus two power times b to the second power. And this goes on and on. This goes on and on until the very last term where you're at n choose n. You're choosing n of them now. And then you have a to the zeroth power and you have b to the nth power. It goes all the way up to there at the very end of things, all the way up to there. And that's what this thing looks like here. It takes a while to kind of come up with, but that's what it does. And that's the formula of this whole thing. That looks really weird, but this is what we're going to dig into for probability. Using these arrangements, combinations. This And this is literally what I could have used for some of these previous questions. When we go to these questions here, find the third term in the expanded form. You have to know in that five, it was one, five, 10, 10, five, one. This is choose zero, choose one, choose two. So I would have done, I would have done what? Five choose two times, and then this would have been three X to the third power. We do five minus two for that. And then we would have done negative two Y to the second power right there. Five choose two is 10. And then three X cubed is that, negative two Y squared is that. So I could have used the formula earlier, but I wanted to fall on the heels of what we last talked about. Now I have to talk about combination because the arrangements of things that are going to happen here. It's getting it in that Pascal's triangle. So that's the big formula. Write it down, have an idea of it, move forward. Again, I have to talk about this in order to make it actually work with us. Okay, now the other part is probability. And this, I'm gonna be a lot faster talking about this part in probability. <coughs> Ellen takes a multiple choice quiz that has five questions with four answer choices for each question. You have to assume that Ellen doesn't like know the answers like she's randomly guessing and like not if you don't know guess C well, I guess whatever but she's she has a 25% chance of getting something right right the probability of success for Ellen the probability of success is 0.25 it's one out of four it's one out of four should I use one fourth I'll just say 0.25 that's fine the probability of getting something wrong I'm gonna put Q 
is 0.75. And this is important when it comes to these formula things right here. We're going to use exactly what we used before. Q, this Q here is always 1 minus P. Um, in this binomial, in, in what's called the binomial condition, in what's called the binomial condition, either you get something, either something is correct or it's not. She either gets it right or wrong. You either shoot the basket or you miss it. You either have a boy or you have a girl. I guess it's non binary, or whatever, but either, you know, chromosome wise, you either have a boy or you have a girl. It, it's, it's either a yes or no, and it's not always 50-50 chance, but it's either yes or no. That means it makes up 100% of what there is. That's a big talk on this thing here. In this particular instance, she has a one-fourth chance of getting something right, and that's part of this. What's the probability she'll get exactly two answers correct by guessing? What you have to understand here, as we talked about that whole combination of how many different ways you can arrange three people out of five, how many different ways can you get two answers correct out of a five-question quiz? You can let let's say it's questions A B C D E. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one more time just so it makes sense. A B C D E. You can either get questions A and B correct, or A and C, or A and D, or A and E, or you can get B and C, B and D, B and E, or C and D, or C and E, or D and E. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ways that you can get two questions correct out of five. That's why the arrangement is important here. That's what the five choose two thing is all about. What's the probability you should get exactly two answers correct? It's based on the fact that there are ten different ways you can get two answers correct out of the different combinations of correct things she could have gotten. She could have gotten one correct, zero correct, and all the combinations there. It's just a big flow of it, and that's what we're looking at here. We're trying to see that entire arrangement in and of itself. Hang on just one second, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, I'm back, it's just a little scammer. Okay, so now how does this part work here? There's a nice little formula involved in exactly what we were doing for doing exactly that, and it was based on the last formula we had. If you wanna find the probability of exactly two correct, five questions, choose two, that's 10 different arrangements for this probability thing. We are going to take the probability of success 0.25, and we are going to raise that to the um, second power there. And then the probability of failure here, 0.75, we will raise to the third power. Basically, in the arrangements, I, I don't want to speak too long on this, but in the different arrangements that we're doing here, you're, you're saying, okay, the, the probability of getting two correct is also considering the probability of getting three wrong on top of it. It's not at least two correct. It's not just one in the next. It's getting these two correct and those other three wrong. So this is the probability of getting two correct and three wrong in just one instance, but there are 10 different instances we can do that. And this will spit out our number. Now, five choose two was 10. Five choose two, zero, one, two is 10. And you can use a calculator for that. 10 times, and I'll do 0 0.2, 0 0.25 squared should be simple enough. Point, uh, six, it's 0 0.60, uh, 0 0.06, uh, what is it? 0.25 times 0.25 is 0.0625. Um, 0.0625 times uh, 0.75 cubed, I don't know. 0.75 cubed is uh, big or small, but 0.421875. So you multiply all that together, and this ends up getting your whole probability, getting exactly two correct. 10 times 0 0.0625 times 0 0.421875. 0 0.2636, I, I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.264 about, I'm gonna round that. So what's the probability? It's about 26.4%. Ellen has about a quarter chance, about 26.4% chance that she's only gonna get exactly two correct if she randomly guessed on this multiple choice test, right? There's a much smaller chance that she'd get all of them correct, and there's a much smaller. Uh, I don't know. There's a small chance she'd get all of them wrong, uh, but you know you consider all all the different things. But getting exactly two correct, she's got that probability of doing it. And that's what it looks like. What's the probability Ellen will get at least three answers correct by guessing? So in this one here, what you have to consider what at least three means is three or more, three or more. So you know what we talked about with the. Uh, with, you know, this was exactly two. So three or more means three or four or five. So what I'm gonna do is the same idea of the formula here. I gotta speed up for these now, I'm past an hour. So, excuse me, three or more, there's the five, choose three, and we'll do 0.25 cubed. 
times 0.75 squared. Three right, two wrong. The or thing, three or more, three or four or five, means the addition of the probability. You take the probability of exactly three, add the probability of exactly four to the fourth power, um, get four correct, and get one wrong. Uh, five different ways you can arrange that. That's what five choose four is. Five choose five is one. There's only one way you can get all of them correct and one wrong, and that's or none wrong, and that's by getting all of them correct. And it looks like that, 0.75 to the zero power, of course. So ultimately, it's just 0.25 to the fifth power, just like that. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to add those up. We're going to compute these. So five choose three should be 10. Remember this. So this one's going to be 10. 0.25 cubed. Hold on. 0.25 cubed is 0.1. Oh, shoot. 0.01. 5625. 0.75 squared, I think we saw, no, we saw 0.75 cubed. 0.75 squared is 0.5625. Next, on the next step, I'm just going to use the calculator and crunch all these together. 5 choose 4 is 5. There are five different ways of getting exactly 4 correct. I'm not going to arrange them for you. But 0.25 to the fourth power is, oh, point, and you can't round these numbers early. Got to use them. 0.75 to the first is exactly that, 0.75. And then this last one is just, this is one, this is one, this becomes 0.25 to the fifth power. So I might not write it. It just goes for a while. I'm just gonna write 0.25 to the fifth. And I'm going to compute that in my last thing, just to round this off to three decimal places. So that I have 0.25 to the fifth already written, and I'm gonna do 10 times this other guy. I honestly, honestly, I should be doing all this, right? Instead of just typing out these large decimals, I should just do these ones because I don't have any variables in the way, but that's okay. <coughs> Plus five times. That's, like I said, don't want to round early. So I'm getting 0 0.1035, so 0 0.104 or about 10.4%. So Ellen has about a 10.4% chance of getting three or more correct. I, I mean, I hope I did, I hope I pressed every number correct when I did my calculations, but that's what I came up with there. Uh, three or more correct, boom, like that, okay. Exactly three correct was probably somewhere close to 8%. And then, you know, going from there. It, it gets, you know, slim pickings, right? You're guessing randomly. Uh, to get three out of five there on a multiple choice is pretty good right? You're a better chance of getting one or two correct in that instance there. Okay, last two. Now that we've seen that, hopefully it's going to make sense what we can kind of say with the rest of them. Okay, a machine that makes a part used in cars has a 98% probability of producing the part with an acceptable tolerance levels. That means that has a 2% chance of not uh, producing the part within it. The machine makes 25 parts per hour. Uh, so probability of success is 0.98. That means the probability of failure is 0 0.02, okay? Con consider that, you know, keep that in mind with it. What's the probability the machine will make exactly 20 acceptable parts in an hour? So it, you know, makes 25 per hour, so um, it makes 25 per hour, but how many are acceptable within that? Given a 98% probability of success, I want you to keep in mind, this is gonna be a very small number, guys, because it's talking about, first of all, there are 25 different, 26 different possibilities either anything from zero to 25, and it's exactly 20, it's just one of them, and it's not swimming, it's a little closer to the 98% thing, right? The closer the number is to your probability of success, like 24 or 25 should give me probably my highest answers. Once you wean farther away from it, right? If Steph Curry has a 98% chance of making a free throw, what's the probability that he makes exactly two of them out of 25 shots? It's like zero, you know what I mean? So this is gonna be a very small number. I just wanna make sure you understand when we do this. So the probability here of 20, we're going to do 25 choose 20. Basically, how many different ways can you, whoops, how many different ways can you arrange the, the uh, what are these? Parts in cars, uh, 20 acceptable parts out of the 25, right? Whatever that is, I'll let the calculator do that one. I'm not gonna do the 25 factorial thing. Um, and uh, da, 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 da. it's 0.98 to the 20th power times 0.02 to the fifth power. 
20 of them are acceptable, five of them are not. What's you know that with the arrangements? Now my calculator here, I gotta find out what my combination thing is. Mine's under a probability. Oh, mine's right here. My calculator's a little different. So I have right here these things here that say, come on, focus. I think my face is in the way. It says NCR, the factorial button, NCR, NPR. I gotta cycle through those. I gotta press that a couple times right there. But I gotta press the other button first. So I gotta press uh 25 so I'll do 25 and then I'll get to NCR and then I'll type 20 so this will give me the different combinations there for uh, all those arrangements and that number is is this enter that number is 53,130 there are 53,130 different ways that you know if you have 26 letters in the alphabet basically how many different ways can you arrange you know 20 of them um, so there's that number now so listen I'll just multiply the rest straight up uh, times 0.98 to the 20th, no, not squared, to the 20th times 0.02 to the fifth. And that's giving me, yes, this is a small number. So 0 0.00113504. Those other numbers are significant in a way. If I shift it two decimal places, that's 0 0.0114%. I'll do it like that. I think generally they, they like decimal answers as well. Decimals are fine, but I'm giving you the percentile. Way less than 1%. It's like a 100th of 1%. For exact, they said exactly 20 though. Exactly 20. All right, what is the probability the machine makes 23 or fewer acceptable parts? Now, if you remember the other one where they said three, at least three answers, I said that's three or more. Three or more means three or four or five when it, it goes up to five. 23 or fewer, means 23 or 22 or 21 or 20 or 19, you know, all the way down to zero. Remember, zero is one of them. Does that mean we have to do 25 choose zero, 25 choose one, 25 to choose, choose two, and add all of them up to 23? It could. That's one way you could do it. The other way you could do it is if you consider that all these probabilities are complements of each other in such a way that, you know what 23 or fewer means? It means not 24 or 25 not 24 or 25. If the chance of, um, if the probability that the machine makes 24 or 25 acceptable parts was 10%, then the probability of making 23 or fewer acceptable parts is 90%. Whatever the answer is, I'm gonna do one minus my decimal or 100 minus my percent. So what I'm gonna do is the not 24 or 25. So I'm gonna do one minus 25 choose 24 times 0.98 to the 24th times 0.02 to the first power plus 25 choose 25 which is one and 25 choose 24 by the way is uh, 25 25 choose 25 times 0.98 to the 25th power times 0.02 to the zero power this basically is just 20, um, uh, 0.98 to the 25th power here. So I'm going to add those two together. This, These two together will give me the probability of 24 or 25 acceptable parts, which, like I said, those lean toward higher probabilities than any of the other 20 whatever that are there. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to be like 50%, but it's going to be higher than any of the other ones. So 25 choose 24, which should just be 25, times 0.98 to the 24th, times 0.02. So that number itself, actually it is kind of big. That number itself is 30-ish percent. So it's 30.7. I'm going to add then 0.98 to the 25th power. Should be a little smaller. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, oh, you know what? This this is huge. Okay. I guess with a 98% probability that you're really likely to land on 24 or 25 pretty well. When you do 24 or 25 added together, if this is all right, then this is 1 minus... 0.9113548898, which, you know, I, I'm just going to do one minus that answer, which is 0 0.08. I guess my number was pretty close. Oh, I said 10%. I did the opposite of this, 64. So that's the answer. Oh, you can't see anything I'm writing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I hate doing this. Okay, I can't pause and go back. So I'm very sorry. I, I can't redo that. I can't edit that. But here's what I was writing here as an entire thing. Hopefully you fast forwarded to it. I feel really bad. It's kind of in a, I don't see that screen. But uh, I'm writing this here. So let me let me say some of the stuff I just said again, just to recap. 
What's the probability the machine makes 23 or fewer acceptable parts? I don't know when the last time was I cut away from this. Uh, 23 or fewer acceptable parts. That means either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 da, 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 or 23, adding all those up. Or you could do the opposite of 24 or 25 acceptable parts. What's the probability of 24 or 25? Just do 100% minus that, 1 minus that uh, decimal. So I did the 25 choose 24 thing and 25 choose 25 thing right here. That's to the 0 power. And I'm going to do 1 minus that whole thing. And I'm getting this number, which is 8.86%. So you got 8.86% chance that the machine will make 23 or fewer acceptable parts there. Okay, I really apologize for that last part, guys. That's that I've done that before, but normally I catch myself beforehand. And uh, I don't know, you see some of the numbers you can pause it. Okay, so that ought to do it for this one. I'll, I'll let you know, guys, this was a lot longer than I expected. Not just binomial expansion, but I had to explain all the other things as well. Hope you stuck through it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things to talk about here. And obviously, there was a lot of work to do. And, um, I don't know, maybe you learned some stats stuff before, but there it is, kind of missed my hair in the process. So that'll do it for this one, guys. This is Mr. Robinson. Thank you so much for watching, and take care. I will see you in the next one.